imagine this. You and your child are having dinner at the dining table and your child asks for a cup of water. So you put down your cutlery, you stood up, you walk over to the kitchen, got a cup, filled up with water and went over to your child and want to pass your child a cup of water. And instead of saying thank you to you, your child said, I want the blue cup. Why did you give me the red cup? No. I'm sure for all of us, we'll be thinking, what is wrong with the child? I stood up, I took the effort to get you a cup of water, you don't appreciate me, and you tell me that I got you the cup of the wrong color. And most likely, you will tell your child, what's the big deal? All the cups are the same, you can still drink from it. Here's the difference. For us adults, we operate from our logical brain because obviously, our brains are fully matured as a parent, right? But for our children, they operate more from their emotional brain and it's for a good reason. Their brains are not mature enough to reason or rationalize that all the cups are the same. So as long as it's different, the red cup is different from the blue cup, they feel really upset about it and that is why they act out. Instead of being a reactive parent, I want you to work towards being an effective parent, knowing that there is a good reason why children act out in a certain way and at the same time knowing how to teach them to work through their emotions and understand how they think. And it is our job as parents, we cannot let our children do the parenting for us. Right, and I think that's the reason why you guys are here. Right, this is our day three of my IG live. We're going to talk about tantrums and triggers, and this is one of the biggest topics. I've received many questions about it. As usual, we'll start with the why do children throw tantrums, and we'll move into the how. And under the how part, we'll talk about what not to do and what to do. Right, feel free to get a piece of paper, take down some notes. I mean, you're here learning, let's make the best out of it. So, my question to you is why do you think that children throw tantrums? Why do children throw tantrums? There's no need to Google about it. The first answer that comes to your mind, type it in the comment box and let me know. The reason I ask you this question because it's foundational to how you respond to the tantrums. If you can understand why they are throwing the tantrum, you can you know, shift your mindset about their behaviors and you can respond in, in a more effective way, okay? All right, some of you said when they feel unheard, yeah, possible, right? They want to get your attention, they start crying. And guess what? Most of the time, we respond to our children when they act out. When they are reading their book quietly, they are eating well, we don't praise them or we don't give them attention. We only give them attention when the siblings start fighting, we put down our phones and we look up at them, right? So no wonder our children want to act out because that seems to be an effective way to get your attention, okay? Um, to get attention, maybe they're feeling unwell, possible. Right? I mean, ask yourself when you are sick, you have no energy to do anything, your muscles are so weak, you just want to lie in bed and sleep. And it's, it is also very difficult for a child to think logically when they are sick as well. Okay? Big emotions, yes, tired, all right? They can't get the thing that they want, so they seek attention. They cannot regulate their emotions. Wonderful, right? This is what we spoke about yesterday, right? They are able to experience all the feelings. So this is the level of feelings that they can experience, that they get to experience as a human. But this is the level of skills that they have right now. So if they cannot regulate, they default to their fight, flight and freeze responses. They depend on their body to cope with these big emotions because not giving the red cup, not getting the red cup is an emergency to our children when it is just a perceived danger. So later on, we'll go into what we can do and what we should not do, okay? They have preferences, maybe preferences for parents or things, right? Which is a good thing, right? Can you imagine a child doesn't have any um, opinion? So it's interesting that, you know, when the kids are younger, we tell them that, you know, you have to listen to me. Um, whatever I do, you have to follow, you have to be obedient. But... We want it to be a miracle that when they grow up, they will suddenly know how to think out of the box, make their own decisions, you know, and question boundaries and choices. 
which is what you know we need in our workplace, right? We want people to be creative and all, but yet we don't allow them to practice it when they are young kids. Is a little bit ironic, but I can completely understand simply because as parents, we really want to gain control of the situation. That's why we'll talk about triggers later on, <laughs> okay? When things don't go their way, when they're tired, when they're unmet needs, when they're angry to get what they want. All right, okay, to communicate. Okay, this was the response I was looking for, all right? They're throwing attention because they want to communicate something. And what are they trying to communicate? All the other things that you guys are saying, they're tired, they're sleepy, they're hungry. They don't get your attention, they miss you, right? So these are all the unmet needs that they want to communicate with us, okay? So with this understanding that there's a mismatch and they throw a tantrum and also the fact that they have done it and it works, so that's why they will continue to do that, okay? Now, I wanted to say that tantrums, all right, um, I asked you why do they throw tantrums, but I think we should peel the layers a little bit more to think about what tantrums are. If you do a quick Google, tantrums are emotional outbursts, bracket, typically found in a child. But I would say, as adults, we throw tantrums too. I mean, just put out an emoticon, you know, if you have ever thrown an adult tantrum before. Me, but I will be the first to admit I've ever done that. I've, I'm still doing it occasionally because... I know why am I so triggered. I'm working on it. We're not perfect. We're all learning and trying. But yeah, so these are emotional outbursts. So how are we going to respond to our children? The first thing is not to throw the adult tantrum, right? We are allowed to have feelings. We're allowed to feel frustrated or annoyed that the child insists on the blue cup or the red cup. You know, the child insists on eating ice cream, right? After dinner, right? We are allowed to have that kind of emotions, but how we respond to our emotions is key. The so kids are watching us. So sometimes you might wonder, you know, why are the children shouting at each other? Why are they pushing each other? Sometimes the kids have seen it around them. Maybe it's not in the family, but maybe in the extended family or in school, right? So we need to help our kids by modeling how we should deal with our emotions, which is a really hard thing to do, I know, because when we were growing up, how many of us were taught to regulate our emotions well? How many of us were taught how to cope, you know, with the feelings that we are experiencing? I would say not many, but now we know, we are aware with the resources and all the more we should learn ourselves, okay? Did my voice change? No. <laughs> I don't know. Can you guys still hear me? So at this point, I think it's good we talk about what are our triggers. What triggers you? So I would say this is like a, a coaching session for me to bring you through. Why are you so easily triggered by your children? And the first question I have for you is what are your triggers? Right? What are your triggers? Comment here right? We are no judgment. We really want to go through this process of reflection, introspection to see like, hey, you know, the banana that's peeled off is causing my child some discomfort. They're throwing a tantrum. But why am I so angry about my child, you know, being so upset about banana or like spilling things on the floor, right? Why are we so agitated about that, you know? Um, let's see, loud noises is your trigger, crying is your trigger, you cannot handle the pain, whining for screen time is your trigger, not feeling hurt since they aren't listening, I like that, not feeling hurt, which also leads me to share, all humans want to feel seen and heard, all, not just you, not just your kids, every single one, so can you imagine, you know, for your kids, they don't get your attention, when they are crying, you tell them, stop crying. They don't feel seen and heard. And that's why it is so frustrating for them as well. And they act out because they're building up, you know, that emotions in them that they cannot process or manage, all right? They're crying, screaming, that triggers you, hitting when the child does not obey, especially when I'm pressed for time, right? Okay, when my boy whines, take things too slow, doing things too slowly, hitting or screaming, whining for my phone and my screen time because they don't want the socks to have lines. Ivy, I've, I've heard of many 
ridiculous, ridiculous uh, reasons why the children are throwing a tantrum. All right. So the the reason why they throw a tantrum is valid. Okay. So we need to understand that when we have these triggers, it could be due to various reasons. It could be because of our past experiences that lead us to think that, you know, the kids should obey us, we should be in full control. Maybe when you were younger, you were spanked, you were invalidated, you were, um, you know, forced to, to be a people pleaser. So you're always wanting to make everyone happy, right? So these are the possible reasons. It also could be because you're very stressed up or pressed for time, right? Some of you say you're pressed for time and that is the reason why, you know, you are so hot-tempered. Uh, hot so all these triggers... Now that you've typed it out and you are aware of it, it's a wonderful first step, right? If there's, you know, everything may have gone badly today, but one thing good is you, I can identify your trigger and that is really worth celebrating, okay? All right, um, worried about how the public look at us. I feel like they get away with everything and not listening. So we will definitely, you know, inevitably have that kind of thoughts, but I hope to change your mindset about it, that the children are not doing things to get away, to make things difficult for you, but really they are being a kid. They are trying to get their needs met. And a lot of times if we can take, take time to understand what they need, it will really be very helpful for them. Okay, all right. So um, I am mindful about some of you not being able to hear me. So just let me know, okay, if it's unclear. When they don't listen to instructions, hitting the sibling when they don't cooperate, yes. So if you haven't watched the first day's replay or um, session where I talk about how obedience is not the goal, all right, you will understand that we don't want our kids to listen to everything that we say. We want them to question, to think whether it makes sense or not. Your child's job is to push limits, but your job is to set the limits. So don't think that when we allow the feelings, right? And that's it. That's the end. No, there's, that's incomplete. There's a lot more to positive parenting. And really, I can't be sharing everything within this short period of time. But please know that connection is only just the first part, we will need to set our boundaries firmly. And um, that is why I, I, I just received this question from a mom. You know, she said that I told my four-year-old son to stop jumping on the bed once. Second time, I told him again and he continued to jump. The third time, I took out the cane. So she was very exasperated. She doesn't know what else to do because the child just refused to listen to her and it is frustrating, right? It feels like you're out of control. Now, guess what? You want to be in control. Your kids want to be in control as well. So it's very difficult for them to immediately calm down because that makes them feel like I'm not in charge and they don't like that, right? So I asked the parent, did your child tell you why he likes jumping? And the child said, because it's fun and bouncy. You see, kids feel more than they think. All they know is it's, they're having fun. But they are not aware of the serious consequences if they fall down. They're not aware of safety. And that's where you come in. That's where you come in to set the boundary to tell your child, I will have to carry you away if you're not coming down because it's not safe. And my job is to keep you safe. Right? So these are things that you need to be aware that our children are meant to push limits. They're not wanting to get things their way or make it difficult for you. You know, they are here to help you. And that is the reason why I am doing this to show you that there is a few steps to this, not just acknowledging, acknowledging the emotions and parents may think, oh, that's very soft. Okay, so if you are keen to learn the entire framework on how you can communicate with your kids when they are acting out, they don't cooperate, when you're pressed for time, when they are delaying bedtime, morning prep, when you have to keep nagging at them, what can you do, right? I invite you to join us, all right? If you don't already know, we are now currently open and I've been welcoming parents into my four-week online course from yelling to connecting and that's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to bring you from yelling to connecting. I don't need you to, you know, scream and shout at your child, punish your child to get them to cooperate. There is another way to do it and we are all here to learn together, okay? So um, some of you are asking me, how do I uh, join in? Just type in the word connect in the comment box and my team will send you the link. You can go and check out to see whether if it's something that resonates with you, it's something you want to learn, um, read the stories that other parents have shared and I think that will be, you know, a good judge on whether you want to invest in yourself, all right? 
most likely, you know, we will be chatting again next week because that's where I will guide the parents every week through a four-week coaching um, program. So every Thursday, we'll meet on Zoom. I'll answer your questions and I will understand, you know, what are you experiencing, the temperament of your child. And these are things that I can't do on the IG Live. But as a group, we can all learn together, okay? So um, yeah, just type in the word connect. You can check the message later on after our session. I'll remind you again later on, okay? So let me just... Uh, step a little back to, to step back to see that where we've covered we talk about why the children throw tantrums we said tantrums are emotional outbursts and we said not to throw the adult tantrum now the next thing not to do don't ask them to stop crying don't invalidate their feelings don't tell them things like what's wrong with you why are you crying over such a small matter stop crying i'm going to count to three one two three stop is it familiar do you do this? Have you heard this when you were a kid? Why do we not want our kids to stop crying, right? There are many reasons, but number one, we know that crying is how our kids express themselves. So if they have certain emotions in them, I, I'm sure you know some of you have felt real anger and real frustration or anxiety at work, right? You, you feel that in you. And what do you do? You communicate with your partner, maybe you WhatsApp, your mommy's group chat and all because you want to release it. And once you release it, you feel so much better, isn't it? And that's the same for our children. When they cry, they are coping, they are healing. Crying is healthy and it's encouraged because think about it. What happens if you don't externalize your emotions? You internalize them. And what happens when feelings get stuck in the body? You know, you're constantly questioning yourself, blaming yourself. Why do I have these thoughts? Why do I have these feelings? And slowly when the child, in the long run, right? I'm not talking about immediately, but in the long run, there can be other potential mental health challenges that your child will face because they never had the opportunity to release it in them. Now, but you might be thinking, I don't want my kid to be crying all the time, right? They should know how to manage it. Yes, they should know. And only if you teach them, right? Only if you bridge the gap and teach them the skills on how to do it. If you ask them to stop crying, how are they going to learn emotion regulation? Children need to feel their feelings in order to regulate their feelings. So if they are often told, you know, not to be angry, not to be frustrated, not to be upset, and the only goal, the only feeling they can have is happiness, then they will go through life not experiencing that and not knowing how to deal with these emotions. Let me tell you a story that a friend shared with me. So she sh shared that her friend, who did very well in school, primary school, you know, always the top student, no stress at all, secondary school is easy peasy for her. She just, you know, breezed past the education system and she's really a, a, a very good uh, student. And uh, she gets everything she wants, you know, no challenges in life. But once she reached university and she started you know maybe to do a project or um, learning maybe the more higher level stuff she realized that she cannot deal with failure she cannot deal with the mistakes that she make and that was because she has never had the experience or the opportunity to work through this kind of discomfort in her she went into a huge depression when she was in university and this is a true story shared to me by a friend and that's not what we want, right? We don't need our kids to be happy all the time. We want them to be able to tolerate the discomfort and work through it so that, in the words of my son, gain experience points. Okay, clearly my son has been playing a lot of games, right? Those of you who play a lot of games, you will know XP experience points. And I was like, wow, son, this is so good. I'm going to teach this to the parents in my course. Experience points, whatever your child is, is going through now, the frustration, being upset that red and blue cup, you know, are different or not being able to get into a school team, not being able to watch the show that they want, not being able to have you beside them at bedtime, you know, not being able to tolerate that they don't want to shower but they have to, they are gaining experience points and this will help them in the future. So don't ask them to stop crying. Don't invalidate their feelings although many of us as we were kids 
I believe, you know, we are told, like, what's, why are you crying? What's the big deal? Or oh, you're a boy, you cannot cry. Boys are humans as well. There are many men now, I know personally even, they cannot deal with the feelings that they are, that they are experiencing. And yeah, very, very sad stories that I hear. You know, so like what some of you shared, you know, my, um, my mother-in-law will tell my child, no need to cry, right? She comes from a logical point, exactly, right? For many of us, we want to approach it logically. We are often in the state of problem solving. You know, when you're crying, right? That you, it won't help if you cry, right? But while they are crying, they are actually coping. They're actually learning how to deal with these emotions. And once they have the experience, the next time they feel it, they know, oh, I've managed to do it before, right? And I can do it again, okay? So it's really building that confidence. Um, I said not to get them to stop crying, not to invalidate, right? The next thing is not to spank, to yell, to punish, to blame, to isolate them. Why? Because it shows that it's wrong to have those feelings. But it's not true. Our kids are going to have feelings all their life, like you and me, right? We can't stop them from experiencing this kind of discomfort. We can only teach them. And also, kids learn that parents will only love them if they suppress their feelings. Parents will only care for them or give them attention, positive attention, when they stop crying. Which also means that they are only loved if they are happy. Which is not very healthy because they're going to grow up expecting people to validate them, to ask others, are you happy with me? Right? There are people who go, grow up like that, right? Are you happy with me? If you're not happy with me, I feel like I need to do everything to make you happy. But it's not healthy, okay? Alright, so we don't want our kids to see that we are afraid of their feelings. Right? We want our kids to know that, come on, bring it on, right? You are having a difficult time, I'm here to help you. And that really starts with your inner work. And that's why in module one, I really teach parents how to identify what are some of the triggers and what they can do. The healing will take a long while, okay, for sure. They are going to take, take years, but let's get started, all right? Um, the third thing not to do, is not to reason with your child when they're irrational. I think this is quite obvious, right? But very difficult to do because when the kids, for example, you know, they, um, they are snatching the toy and you tell them, don't snatch, if not, it will break. And when they really do that, you say, see, I told you, right? I told you not to snatch. Now it is broken. You're trying to reason with the child, right? But this child is clearly overwhelmed and physiologically, Nobody will be able to think logically when they are in a state of fight and flight, right? Our blood is, you know, flooded with cortisol and the body's job at the moment is really just to keep them safe. And that's why you cannot reason with your child. Screen time is up. The alarm has rang. You promised me. You didn't keep your promise. Or, you know, if they tell you that um, there's no homework, from school and in the end there is homework and you say you're lying to me now at that moment your child is so uh, worried so anxious and stricken with fear how is your child going to think rationally to explain to you or to share with you so don't reason when the child is in this state of um, um, at, um, in the grip of fight and flight okay I hope this is clear so you might be thinking what do we do <laughs> very quickly I'll tell you what we'll do um, however, I think it's better if I can answer your questions and share with you more tips. So let me just very quickly share. Um, firstly, I've shared this several times. Peanut butter, P and B, pause and breathe. So that's one thing you're going to do tomorrow. If your child is crying, tell yourself, I'm not afraid. I'm going to pause. I'm going to breathe. I'm not afraid of the, the cries. The cries can come to me and I am able to tolerate it because I know that they are coping. The child is going to feel better. It's a healthy way for my child to learn emotion regulation when they start crying, all right? So your job is to pause, you breathe, and share your calm because it's easier for them to calm down that way so that they can access the logical brain and start to hear from you or even you hear from your child that you know you really wanted the red cup and that's where connecting comes in. Right, you really wanted the red cup. You didn't want the blue cup. 
Now, does it mean that we are going to give the child the red card? No. But we are going to say yes to how the child feel about the red card. And all feelings are valid, right? We can say yes to the feeling and still say no to the behaviors. So connect with your child, um, hold space for your child so that they on their own can work through their emotions. So bear in mind that when you connect, your goal is to not, not to stop them from having the feelings, right? That goes against what we spoke about. Like we really want them to gain the experience points, right? To experience uh, certain discomfort so that they can build their tolerance. But your goal is really to help them see that it's not a dangerous situation and when they are more relaxed, naturally their body will bring them into a state where they can rationalize, and listen to you. Okay? Now there's a lot that I can share. Um, okay, wait, one more thing I forgot to add. This connecting part is not the end, right? Early on I said there's also other sites where we want to work on the behaviors. So the problem solving part, you know, um, setting your firm boundaries and telling them what they can do, what they cannot do, filling up, you know, their, their need for autonomy, right? So these are all the things that we want to work on and I can only do that with more time, right? If I have more time with you, we can go through everything. But unfortunately, I can't in this IG Live and that is why I invite parents to join me. For those who have just joined us, type in the word connect and I will send you the link to my four-week online course. If you have joined the course, don't need to type, okay? <laughs> yeah, um, because you have lifetime access, don't join again, you have lifetime access and you get to review the, ses the videos. If you have a new, another child, right? If you feel like your child is going, going through a different stage of their development, review the videos, um, review the podcast, review the PDFs, review all the coaching calls, okay? And that's where I can support you better. And also a reminder that um, we are, the early bird bonus will end tomorrow. So the early bird bonus is where we talk about um, fostering resilient minds. So in that bonus, you will get three videos on growth mindset, intrinsic motivation, and overcoming perfectionism. Now, all these three, if you realize, has got a lot to do with emotions as well. Emotion regulation so that your child is able to step out of um, their discomfort. Right? If they feel they make mistakes, they can try again. And that's growth mindset. Intrinsic motivation, knowing what to do, what's the right thing to do, maybe in terms of um, um, maybe certain sports, you want them to be motivated, or daily routines, you want them to know why am I, you know, why do I need to brush my teeth? Why do I need to... Um, change in my pajamas, why do I need to go to bed? We want them to be intrinsically motivated to do all those. And again, it has got to do with the emotions they feel, managing their impulses. And finally, this is a brand new resource, Overcoming Perfectionism, that um, I just added for this batch. So that is where you will see, you know, when children feel like they cannot make it or they are not up to certain standards comparing with their friends, they're not good enough, you know, their hair is not um, long enough or they are, their bag is not, um, you know, cute enough, right? They want everything to be perfect. Again, it has got to do with the emotions, all right? How do you help your child to see that, yep, I'm feeling jealous, I feel inadequate, but you can work through it, right? You can think positive thoughts, you can think about ways for you to build up that confidence and see what is really truly important. And I think at the bottom of all this is really your relationship with your child, right? If you want your kids to listen to you, to learn that positive self-talk from you, to model, right? You really need them to see that you care for them. You need them to feel seen and heard by you. You need them to feel like you are on their team. And that is why from yelling to connecting, because when you are connecting with your child, the child feels safe. The child feels that you care for them. They are valued. They are important to you that you will make time to connect with them. All right. So it is very important that we work on that relationship. Okay. All right. Um, that's what I wanted to share. So let's go into a Q&A now. Many of you have questions and I think it'd be nice for me to just give you the real examples or strategies that, you know, um, you, you'll share. Okay, so Denise has a very good question. How long should we let them cry? I don't have a number. I mean, I've just, I was combing through the research to find, you know, but actually this is very, um, it depends on the individual, really because everyone has a different temperament, right? 
But I can assure you, no matter how long your child is crying now, if you are consistent in responding to your child in the same way, you are literally rewiring their circuitry to know that when I'm upset, I'm crying, my parents will be next to me, they will hold my hand, they will sit with me, and they will hear me out. This duration of crying, no matter how long it was at the beginning, will reduce. Right? It will become shorter and shorter. Um, sometimes parents have told me, you know, at the beginning, wow, 45 minutes, one hour. For me personally, I dealt with my own kids crying up to an hour or longer in front of all my extended family. So my parents-in-law, uh, my husband's brothers and sisters. One hour, I was sitting with my son in front of the television because he doesn't want to eat at the dining table. And all of them were just there watching me do my work. <laughs> okay, now I think back. Wow, I mean, I, 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 didn't, I don't remember feeling stressed about that. But I know I need to hold space for my child. And I need to be firm as well. I'm not saying that, oh, then you can have dinner in front of the TV. No, right? So it, it took me a while. But after that, you know, sometimes five minutes or even lesser. Right, letting them cry. Knowing that, you know, for my daughter, when she starts crying, I ask her, do you want support or solution? Her favorite answer is both. So she'll come to me for support. I hug her. I will let her draw circles on my hand and she likes to end with a dot. <laughs> okay, that is our little quote. And she created it herself. She ended with a dot and I know she felt better. Sometimes we'll hold her hands and I'll tell her, um, it's hard for you. I know you really want to eat the chocolate. I, mommy didn't give you and you're upset. Okay, I'm here for you. I'm, I'll listen. And I said, squeeze my hand when you're ready. So it took maybe like less than a minute I felt the squeeze. So I know, okay, let's work something out. I'm not going to give in to her. I'm not giving her the chocolate. But at least she knows I'm there for her with whatever feelings that she's experiencing and we can work through things together, okay? Yeah, um, let me see. My five-year-old knows the boundaries I've given him, but recently he starts crying when he has to stop. Example, watching TV. Is this something I should be worried about? Like something could have happened in school? Um, no, actually, I think it's pretty normal that when we set the boundaries and the kids don't like it, the job is, your job is not to make the kids like the boundaries that you set. And they're not going to like it. But they need it, right? They, if you don't set the boundary and you say, okay, you can watch for a whole day. It's actually quite scary for the child, right? To know that I can do whatever I want. And if it's something that compromises the child's health or safety, then it's something you need to really instill. Like jumping from a high high um you know a bed or a dining table or a chair or watching tv for the whole night you know um, these are not healthy for them and you want to come in to set the boundary so parents are very afraid so i remember every batch i'll ask them so which is the diff most difficult step they'll tell me setting boundaries is the most difficult step yeah so it really comes with understanding the child and practicing it okay Do, does time out work when they're not listening i know some preschool practice it i i'm not for time out um, I think timeout means you leave the child alone to kind of like process the entire thing. Um, it's very selfish of us to expect a child to know how to reason within themselves. Um, and it's unfair to them because they don't have the ability to do so. And we think that they should, right? Just because we can rationalize doesn't mean they can. So I, I don't recommend timeout. Um, I don't think there's a difference if you can sit with your child. Um... Yeah, but there's no need to isolate the child because again, that shame in them is going to have very long-term lasting effects which are not healthy, right? If if they are feeling, if they're not listening to you, find out why. Because doing that time out or really isolating them doesn't build the skill to get them to cooperate, right? Why are they not cooperating? Maybe they have a better idea. Maybe they don't like what you're saying. Or maybe they haven't been able to fill up, you know, that, that need for autonomy yet, and you're telling them what to do, and of course, the child wouldn't want to do it. If you want your child to cooperate, really work on the relationship. More cooperation, sorry, more connection will lead to more cooperation. Okay, go back to uh, day one, where we talked about that, okay? Okay, um, how do I teach my boy to verbalize instead of crying and whining? That's our goal, right? We want our children to tell us. And that is why your kids are already telling you, Mommy, I'm so angry. Or you're being unfair. You want to thank your kid. Thank you for telling me that, right? That's what we want to work towards. But for them to get there, it's high level, you know, right? Because they need a lot of practice. So if you want to teach them, right, a lot of um, 
pretend play will help modeling it giving them the words to use and knowing that they are not going to know how to do it immediately right being patient that will really help them to eventually learn to verbalize it um, books will be helpful as well right going to exercises with them pretend play simulating situations those will be very helpful what can we do when they are crying or feel upset because of quarreling with the sibling while we, at, we are at work and we cannot stay beside them? Um, I'm not sure if there's another adult beside them, right? If they're crying or they're feeling upset because they just quarreled with their sibling. I think at that point in time, really not to solve the problem and not to help them, you know, get they, our job is not to, you know, get them to shake their hands immediately, but really giving them the time to process uh, what actually happened and they're feeling upset and it's okay to be upset. But I understand if you're not physically there, it's hard. Hopefully, the other caregivers can help. Um, if you find that, oh no, my, my other caregivers are not able to do all this, right? There are a few ways. So this is another common question that I receive in my coaching calls in my, the parents in my course. They will tell me, um, but my husband, right, he, he only believes in caning. Or my parents-in-law, they spoil the child and they're always giving the iPad when the child is crying, right? So how do I teach my child um, or allow them to cry and work through their emotion regulation? And I would think you need to model to the other adults. If at least one parent can show up the way and model how it's done, the other, ki the other adults can watch and learn. So I have this parent in my course tell me, right? she told me, that, you know, I've been using the words that you teach, like gentle hands, tell me more, um, draw circles. And she heard her, her helper say the same thing. The helper tell the, the kids, gentle hands, gentle hands. I mean, this is really what we want, right? To influence everyone in the family, to parent on the same page. And you can only start if one person starts doing that. So if you don't have that one person to start learning, it will be much harder. And of course, you can send resources to the other caregivers to help. And husbands, all right, I've helped so many husbands. I'm so, so proud of the men in my course. Um, yesterday, I shared, right, they do better than us, right? They're better than the, the wives that join because I think when you can understand their child from angle of research, her science, you know, like, you can understand why they behave this way and you also know your triggers. You know you don't want to bring up your kids the same way you will apply. You will realize that you become much closer to your child and they're more open to you. That feeling, you know, seeing that you are making a difference when you invest in yourself, okay? What can we say or do if the child doesn't like physical touch or when experiencing big emotions? Oh, I, I answered this question, I think yesterday or the day before. Um, it's okay, don't have to touch the child, stay at a distance, but be able to see the child. Okay, there was this parent I've met um, during one of my workshops in the library, I remember, and she told me that, you know, my girl likes to lock herself in the room when she's upset. Um, and we don't have window grills, so I'm very worried about her. Should I leave her inside? So, my first response to her, go and install the window grills. That's a boundary, that, that's safety, right? You don't compromise on that. Go and install the window grills. The issue is not about whether she locked herself in the room, but to make sure that the space is at least safe for her. And I told her, you know, if your child, I think the child was about four or five, right? And uh, if the child wants to be there, right? It's okay, but let your child know that you are not, good, not allowed to close the door. Mommy will be here watching you. And when you need me, you can come out, right? So if the child um, has that, um, we, we want to also go along with their temperament. But more importantly, process the entire situation with your child after that. Don't leave them alone in trying to figure things out, okay? All right, um... I've been practicing the hand squeeze since I first heard it from Justine. <laughs> Very simple, yet effective transition for moving on. Thanks so much. Yeah, feel free to try that, you know, hold their hands and get them to squeeze when they feel that they are ready. And you can even be playful after that. When they squeeze you, you say, oh, is there a squeeze? I can't really feel it. You get them, they, they will squeeze harder, right? You say, ah, so painful. So that's when you lighten the entire mood to see that, hey, you know, we are a team. Let's learn together. Right, mommy is here for you. We can solve this together. Right? It really means a lot to the child when you kind of lighten things up and be a little bit more playful, okay? Um, right. Why, what if they refuse to try any of the calming down methods when they're upset? Perhaps because of pride or they think that it's silly. That's okay, all right? If they feel like, I don't want to do all those, you should still model it. You should still continue to show your child how it's done simply because 
they will catch it or they might do it one day even when you're not watching or looking can you imagine if you you grow up in an environment where you don't know how to cope with emotions like nobody does it and everyone's like so reactive everyone's shouting you know to get things done you have to shout then this child will do the same because that's what the child has been exposed to all right so continue to model it to them at what age should we start? The child should be able to listen and understand in order for us to talk to them and manage their emotion, right? Actually, this emotion regulation thing, there are um, a few parts, right? It's not just the verbal, there's also the non-verbal part. So I would say even your babies, you know, when they start crying, you start petting them, oh, it's okay, you know? that. In, in fact, this morning, I was trying to queue up for breakfast and I saw this taught, um, preschooler, Right? The mother went to buy food. So the preschooler was sitting on the table with the baby in a pram. And suddenly the baby woke up and started crying. You know what this preschooler did? She went into tap, 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 tap. And the baby fell asleep. I'm like, oh my goodness, so amazing. <laughs> right? So this touch, right? This hand gesture for your baby, they feel safe. And that's where you first start teaching them about attachment, feeling safe so that they can see who they can count on right and that will really be very helpful for them to learn emotion regulation that they know they can always fall back on the people they love the most to be there for them and i also mentioned i think the first first day i talk about how receptive language comes before expressive language so the kids are taking in you know everything you're saying now they're taking in then they'll express it later on they need to have input before you can get the output okay all right um let me see. How do I deal with a six-year-old who asks me for something and I don't allow it? And she will say, I knew you were going to say that and storms off and start whining. Hmm. I can understand why the six-year-old say that because, of course, when they come to you, right, the moment they want to get what they want, right? They want to be in control and be in charge. And when they don't, right, they will immediately switch to their survival mode. They will say the mean words, say things that no, they may not mean it at all. So that's what we do in day two yesterday. So feel free to go back and watch the replay. Um, don't take it personally, okay? Now wait for your child to calm down. Remember I say when they are irrational, don't even try to explain, right? Don't say things like, I've been working so hard for the family and you know, you all you do is you're so disrespectful, you're so rude, right? These are, these are, are, are behaviors of us throwing the adult tantrum, isn't it? right it's as if you're saying i knew you're going to say that so please be very mindful of how you respond you don't have to get be perfect all the time okay we are all humans and we all have emotions and we are really still learning so as long as you pause and you breathe you don't react immediately take time to speak to your six-year-old find out what is it that they want you know maybe they want a phone all right or they want to play a game and you don't give it to them or they want extra a uh, new water bottle or whichever Connect with them first. I know you want this, right? Um, unfortunately, we don't have the money. We are not able to, or it's affecting your your um, your eyesight, right? Whichever, right? Just explain to them. Talk to them like, you know how how you are teammates. You're not against them. It's you and them against whatever the issue is. Okay. Um, can I rewatch all this live again? Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, we will send out the link later on. Okay. All right, let me see. Uh, I can take one or two more. Um, non-stop heating and punching. I will have to um, direct you to yesterday's class. So watch the replay. We talk about how children are heating and not to take it personally and to see that they are really also trying to cope. Okay, uh, let me see. Um, so some of the questions are about physical um, aggression. Please go back to yesterday's video so that I can answer the other questions. Why is it that my kids' uh, cousins, whose emotions are not as consciously validated as my kids, seem to be more emotionally regulated than my kid? Makes me feel like I'm something wrong. Okay, I'm not sure what you mean by they are more emotionally regulated. Um, or is it that they are easygoing or they just, you know, obey without thinking? I, I think that is the difference. And also for children, you know, who feel a lot more, definitely you are going to have a harder time. I'm not going to deny that, right? Because I have, I have two kids and one is more emotional than the other. And every time I deal with the kid who is more emotional, it really takes the, the all the energy out of me. I'll be so tired by the end of the day. You know, then all this 
think thoughts like oh i'm a bad parent or why is my child doing this to me why is it that this child cannot be like that child these thoughts will come through your mind and it's very normal the, you think about all this simply because you care for your kids they are so important to you right and that's why you're so affected by it if you're not then i would say you no know, i mean you won't be not affected by it right okay okay yeah i think that's what uh, i wanted to share so um please oh there are some questions in the question box all right yeah there's a question mark box okay thank you for reminding me so my team Tracy, she's here helping me. So if you get a reply from her, uh, she's trying to help you along. All right. And it's her birthday today. <laughs> okay. And she's still here with me. All right. What to do when you have exhausted all the methods and patience and time with the kid in tantrum. Okay. If you can pass the baton to someone else, that would be great. Okay. Because you cannot take it anymore. Because you are human as well. You need to externalize your emotions too, right? In an appropriate way. Yeah, but if you cannot pass the baton to someone else, if you have no one else in the house to help you tell your children, make sure that they are safe, mommy or daddy needs to have a time out, right? So time out for adults, but time in for the children. So tell them, I need to go and take a cup of water. I need to, you know, go to the toilet for a while. I'll be back, right? So that's where you work through your emotions um, and help. And come back as a better person, okay? Alright. Um what to do? Okay. So my child is too, cannot communicate well. How can we set boundaries and make him understand what we're trying to say? For a two-year-old, they may not be able to understand every word that you share. But if you set a boundary firmly, right? Certain behaviors like you know, I'm not gonna let you throw, I'm gonna take away the toy. They may not fully understand, but they can sense it from you. I would say continue to set the boundary um, slowly. You know, they will start to realize that what can be done and what cannot be done. So earlier on, I shared, uh, is it this, uh, I, there was this question about my child keeps throwing food on the floor, two and a half year old. Um, and she said, how do I get my son to stop throwing the food on the floor? Right? I've already told her many times. So the boundary that you set is, you know, if they start throwing food, then you have to remove the food away from their reach. Right? Because as an adult, you cannot expect the child to work on their own impulse control themselves to see the food is there, but I don't throw it. That's not their job. So our job is to take the food away, all right? Bring the child aside, connect first, and work on that connection before you explain to your child. And another thing I wanted to share is that if you can understand, right? That's why in the course I always teach, you know, what, why are your kids behaving this way? You need to know what are the unmet needs. And it's not difficult to understand. That's why I will simplify it for you. It's all in module one. When you can understand why your kids are throwing the food, right? One of it is that they want to feel in charge, right? Or they're learning cause and effect for our two to three year old kids. For this parent, I told her, if your child is throwing food, have a little session before dinner or before lunch for your child to throw. Maybe you can crush paper balls. Throw into the basket, let the child throw and throw and throw and throw. Let the child have a lot of fun. And tell your child, okay, that's all the things that we're going to throw. Now we're going to have our meals. So where do we put the food? You know, ask your child. Put it on the floor or put it on the table, right? Give them a choice. If they try to be funny, you also try to be cheeky and playful with them. Eventually the child will, will get it if you repeat it several times and it, when you set your boundaries, okay? All right. Um... I have one is emotional and the other test all kinds of boundaries. So you can see, right, all our children are very similar. Uh, Brenda is here. Brenda said I joined FYTC three years ago. So Brenda is one of my Sprout members as well. Very, very honored to have her and her husband together. We're all learning together. So, so glad. Okay. So what I want to share is you can make the change. You just need to invest in yourself to learn and understand your kids. Type in the word connect if you can't find the link. Um, that's where I share, you know, what we'll cover in each module, how I can support you in our private Facebook group, and also um, the weekly coaching calls that we we'll have like this. If you enjoy, you know, us answering and, you know, discussing the questions together, you get to learn from parents who are ahead in their parenting journey as well. I think if you need a community to feel supported, if you're feeling very lonely, you're doing this alone, your partners, they are not on the same page as you and really want to make the change, I would say do it, um, you know, so that 
you can be the one who show up and transform your family and make the change okay um early bird ends tomorrow i'll remind you again my ig stories and um, if you type connect i will also remind you uh, because i always have parents coming to me oh no i missed the early bird can i have the early bird bonus so um yeah i'll remind you but i hope to see you in class i'm also very curious how many of you have attended three sessions um, whether it's a replay or live <laughs> you let me know i'm so curious um yeah this will be the last one and if you're going to have more i will see you in class next week we have our welcome core then we'll start officially we'll journey together as a batch together okay as a cohort together to learn together all right how do i see yesterday's live i will put it up on my ig stories later on give me about half an hour where tracy and i will then try to you know put everything together and send you the link okay um that's all i have for you any questions i'll be at my uh, inbox tracy and i will you know try to support you as much as we can um whether you have questions admin matters or what she can help or um, questions whether is this suitable for me my kid is you know eight years old is it suitable i'll be more than happy to guide you through okay all right goodbye see you